Well, hello, church family. Glad to welcome you to another edition of the Stay at Home Sermon. We know that there is a pretty good percentage of our church that, for health reasons, continues to stay at home. And we just want to say bless you and we love you. We want you to be able to stay connected through these messages. I remind you on each Sunday morning now at the regular worship time at 1040, the traditional service is being streamed live. And then I'm releasing this on Sunday mornings, which is kind of a preview and just a little something for you to chew on. Uh, during church time on Sunday mornings, and then the the version of the what's recorded live in Common Ground will come out usually on Mondays. But so glad you could tune in. We bless you, we miss you, and we want you to be a part of it. I'm glad today to introduce uh, a new series called Samuel the Prophet. Where we'll be taking a look at some of the the bigger events in the life of Samuel uh, in the book of First Samuel. So today we begin uh, with the, the events surrounding his birth. His birth was a miraculous birth. And, and it beca came because of his mother, Hannah, who just continued to believe after years of barrenness, uh, to continue to believe and to ask God for a son. And so the, the story is, is that, that uh, Hannah was married to a guy named Elkanah, and, and as was common back in that day, he had more than one wife, and the other wife, Penina, had children. And, and she would kind of flaunt it in front of Hannah, would, would, would agitate her and pick at her and irritate her. And this went on for years and years. And the, and the story is, is that they would go up to a place called Shiloh, which is where the Lord's temple or tabernacle was at that time in the history of the nation of Israel. And we pick up in, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9, this story of them going back and forth to the temple. And when Hannah uh, cries out to the Lord and then becomes pregnant with, with uh, her son Samuel, he becomes this amazing leader and prophet. So in verse 9 it says this, Once they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up, and now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly, and she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth, for Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. And Eli thought she was drunk, and he said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my Lord, replied Hannah, for I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer, but I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman, for I've been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. And Eli answered, and this is key, go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant what you have asked him. Verse 18, and she said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. And then she went away and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then they went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son, and she named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. All right, so in this series, we're going to be looking at the life of Samuel and pointing out some of the key factors. Uh, Samuel, you know, a little bit of background on him. He, he was a guy that had many roles in his lifetime that was different than many of the other prophets of that day. He was a priest. He was the chief priest in the tabernacle at Shiloh for a season of his life. He was the last judge before uh, God moved from judges to having kings, and he was also recognized as a prophet. So as we look at Samuel, one of the threads that I want to us to pay attention to over the course of the, the, the series of messages the next few weeks is this idea of hearing. What does it mean to hear God? It's interesting that in Hebrew, the, word, the name Samuel means God heard. God heard Hannah's pride. So I just want to tell you today that as we unpack these stories uh, that represent kind of the highlights of Samuel's life, I want you to be looking for that thread uh, throughout all the messages. It'll kind of tie them together. So what are some points that we will make? One of these is this, is that desire points to destiny. Why didn't Hannah, who had been barren for some time, why did she put herself through that grief year after year and continue to cry when, when obviously years had gone by and, and you know it looked like she was not going to have a child? Why did she torture herself and just continue to do this? But sometimes I think it's true that the things that we desire the most in some ways make the least amount of sense. You ever been around somebody where they just really wanted something and it almost didn't make sense 
for them to want it, and maybe it even causes pains. But there are those parts of all of our lives where it doesn't really make sense, logical sense, for us to keep hoping for it. However, we keep on hoping because our desire is pointing to our destiny. Remember that always. Your destiny is linked to your desire. So what about you today? I want you to think about it, pray about it. What is a desire that you have for something to come to pass? Maybe it's been taken too long. Maybe it even seems like it's never going to happen. Maybe you've dealt with disappointment time after time. It may very well be the fact that you can't let it go is that it's pointing to your destiny in some way. Point number two is this. Sometimes our deepest longings are delayed. Why is that? You know, in God's economy, in the economy of man, sometimes it, it just doesn't seem to make sense that something would take so long. Maybe somebody's wanted to be married and it's taking forever. Maybe somebody's wanting a child, a career, their dream home. You know, they're uh, they want to own their own business, and it just seems like it's every time they they step toward it, it gets delayed again and delayed again, and they're frustrated. And then, and you know, it's almost too painful to hope for it anymore. Sometimes we have to wait, and 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 there are different reasons for that. Listen to her. I mean, she begged God to intervene. She cried out for God to give her a son to the point that it looked like she was drunk. Uh, but you know, it, it was just there. So. Sometimes we just need to remember that the, the deepest longings of our heart are the ones that seem to get delayed the most. doesn't mean that God's not listening. But here's what I think is true, because when it happens, when it does come to pass, when we have that thing in our hands that we've only dreamed of in our hearts but haven't been able to really see yet, when we finally get it in our hands, it means more. It means a lot to us. And we view it then with the right attitude of gratefulness because it was born out of difficult circumstances. Sometimes. Our deepest, deepest longings are delayed. But the final point would be this, and it was certainly true in the life of Hannah, and it was played out later in the life and ministry of Samuel as well. God hears our deepest cries. God knows the desires of our hearts. I mean, if you look at Hannah as our example, she continues to cry out to God to give her a son after years and years and years of bitter and painful disappointment, willing to look foolish, to be drunk, <laughs> you know, if you will, in the presence of the chief prophet or the, the chief priest of, of Israel at that time. Listen, God may not answer us in many situations in the time frame that we think that He ought to, but God hears the cry of our hearts. And oftentimes I think He, he waits and He gives us those things at the right time just so that they'll mean more and that we'll be grateful because we know the only way we got it is because it came from His hand. So in this series, we're going to talk a lot about hearing God. Uh, the name Samuel means God heard, right? So it's what connects each message. So in looking ahead, uh, uh, we got this message today, and then the message next week will be about Samuel the boy when he's learning to minister in in the with, in the house of the Lord with Eli, the older uh, priest. How how Samuel learns to hear the voice of God. It's a great story. And then when Samuel anoints David as king, it's a big deal. It's a big day. So we just want you to know, all of you that are staying at home, we continue to think about you. Hope you'll call sometime and check in if there's anything that we can do for you. Uh, we continue to pray for all of our church as we take these steps to gradually reopen, and, but just continue to be who we are as a people, uh, even in the midst of, of trying circumstances. So let me pray for us as, as we close this today. God, I do pray that in these messages that we would be encouraged that we would remember that even when sometimes it's taking a while, that you hear the cry of our hearts. We pray that you would speak to us through Samuel. And God, I pray for each person listening to these messages today. I ask you to bless them and encourage them, strengthen them uh, in everything that's being faced. And uh, we thank you so much for your presence in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. So you be blessed. Hope that you'll continue to tune in. Remember to look for the the message uh, that's preached in Common Ground that'll come out on video on Monday. So blessings to you. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.